Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Adams, and I'm happy to be hosting this segment of Matters of the Heart. Uh, this is sponsored by Pentucket Medical Associates and Haverhill Community TV. And today I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Sunny Srivastava, and his topic that he'd like to address today is syncope, which is the medical term for fainting spells. Great. Thank you. Um, so I wanted to talk about fainting because it is one of the more common complaints that I'm presented with in the office. Numerous people, regardless of their age, young, older, will come in with a complaint of passing out or fainting at some point. And there are so many different causes of the passing out. Um, and, and what I really want to focus in on is the type where people will pass out suddenly, lose consciousness, regain their consciousness, and feel okay after the fact and try to figure out what that is. And that's what the definition of syncope is. Uh, is that, and it's essentially caused by a sudden diminished blood flow to the brain, which causes you to pass out, but then there are various causes for that. And like I started off by saying, it is a very common problem, uh, as I'm sure you know from your office uh, practice as well. Uh, approximately one-third of the population will have an episode at some point in their life, which is quite a few people. And it ultimately, as a result, accounts for a fair amount of the ER visits we have, anywhere up to 5% of all emergency room visits are because of a passing out episode. Uh, and subsequently, almost 1% of all the hospitalizations are a result of a passing out episode. So it's something important to talk about. Uh, obviously, people can get hurt with this, and that occurs up to a third of the time in a passing out episode. Uh, it's a very costly thing to the healthcare system as a result of these uh, emergency room visits, hospitalizations, and tests that are subsequently done to evaluate this. Uh, there's statistics out there that quote the average cost for this evaluation per patient, it's about four or five thousand dollars to figure out what's going on. So that's not insignificant, certainly. Um, you know, I always found this to be a very scary problem for patients. You know, one of the things that makes patients really frightened is if they get very short of breath and they can't breathe properly, or if they pass out. Right. So, what what kind of patients will usually have one of these syncopal events? Right. So, as I first mentioned, you know, a third of the population will have it at some point. So that's a lot of people, obviously. And generally speaking, there's no difference. Men and women are equally susceptible. Different races are all equally susceptible. But the risk for this certainly increases as we get older. And there's a marked increase as one uh, hits 70 or above. Um, those who have underlying heart problems, whether it be a history of heart attacks, stroke, heart failure, heart valve problems, those folks are certainly more predisposed to passing out. Um, and additionally, when they do pass out, it's often a more serious issue uh, in those who have uh, underlying problems. Many cases of passing out, as we'll talk about, I'm sure, are benign or fine, not dangerous. They're a nuisance, certainly, but not dangerous. Uh, and often, unfortunately, many of these episodes go unexplained, despite our best efforts, uh, as I'm sure many of the viewers can attest to, certainly. Yeah, that's always, it's really one of the more challenging problems because so many times we can't figure out exactly what happened. I mean, sometimes we can, we can rule out some of the more serious things, right. but we can't always figure out exactly what happened. But I know you wanted to talk about some of the more common causes of this yeah, problem. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, there are so many different causes of passing out, and I think one way of approaching it would certainly be to divide them up into those related to the heart, in those not related to the heart. So we'll start out, since we're, we're both cardiologists, we can start off with the heart. And um, the heart has an electrical system within it that tells it when to beat, essentially, and how to beat, and how quickly to beat or how slowly to beat. And that, or problems with that electrical system, can often be a very common cause of passing out. Uh, the heart can go very slowly, for example. And so within this electrical system, they're like wires. You can think of them as wiring of the heart. As we get older, that wiring can become, uh, it can de it can become calcified, thickened, uh, degenerate a little bit, and just slow down. And that's a cause of the heart slowing down, certainly. And if the heart slows down too much, the heart's not able to pump enough blood to the head, and someone would get lightheaded, dizzy, pass out. Uh, and often the body reacts by by surging the heart rate back up briefly to, so you can at least regain consciousness. Um, but that's not an uncommon cause of older folks passing out. Uh, and those are people who often end up with pacemakers, for example. Can you give um, our audience just a little more of a feeling of what that electrical system in the heart is like, a little bit more of the yeah, structure? Sure, absolutely. There's, a, you know, there's the upper chambers of the heart and lower chambers of the heart. The upper chambers are known as the atria or atrium, and the lower chambers are the ventricles. 
and there's a little spot of tissue, uh, specialized electrical tissue at the top of all this, and the name of it is the, the sinus node, and this generates the electrical impulse to tell the lower parts of the heart when to beat. It travels down, halfway down the heart, it hits another one of these um, uh, special spots of tissue uh, called the AV node, and then that sends the message down to the rest of the heart. So anywhere along this whole electrical system, these wires, you can have problems where things can slow down, become blocked. One common place is that AV node right in the middle. Uh, it's a very important, it's like a way station. It, it gets all these messages from above and it distributes it to the rest of the heart. And as we get older, certainly that can become diseased and slow down uh, and thus cause what we call heart block and uh, subsequently to people passing out. But also we as physicians often give patients medicines that can affect that as well. Some of the more commonly prescribed ones are a class of medication called beta blockers. So some of the names are atenolol, uh, metoprolol, toprol, lopressor, carvedilol, or coreg. Those are some of the more commonly prescribed ones that I'm sure many viewers have heard of or are on. Um, and this is a commonly prescribed blood pressure medicine. Uh, it's a medicine that's commonly used for people who've had heart attacks or congestive heart failure. And one of the things it does, it slows the heart rate down. But in some folks who might be susceptible to this, it could slow things down too much um, and affect that AV node and, and, and block as well. Uh, other medicines that can do that, something that are known as calcium channel blockers. So some of the common names of that are cardizem, diltiazem, or cardia, uh, verapamil. Uh, those are some of the commonly, uh, and, and the similar use for those medicines, common blood pressure medicines. Uh, they're used for certain heart conditions as well. Another one is called digoxin or digitalis or lenoxin. It's been around forever, uh, but does the same thing. It's something that we often use in people with heart failure or who've had another problem called atrial fibrillation, irregular heartbeats. Uh, so those can do that as well. Uh, other causes of these slow heart rhythms, um, for example, if someone's in the throes of a heart attack, there are certain types of heart attacks that the blood supply so this electrical system is diminished, and that could cause you to slow down and subsequently pass out. Mm -hmm. So that's something, certainly. Um, the, we talked about the AV node. That's the middle one that uh, serves as the way station, so to speak. The upper one, the sinus node, which really starts the whole thing, uh, generating the impulse, that can become diseased as well. Uh, there's a syndrome called sick sinus syndrome where it doesn't work as well and can't generate a good heart rate, and, uh, and, and that can subsequently lead to people passing out as well. You know what, you, know, you and I help each other in the hospital and see each other's patients, and uh, you know, without giving away too many details, we, we just had a couple of patients in the hospital that, that had slow heart rates, and uh, they were on, I think both right. those patients were in a couple of different yeah, medicines and there were a that lot of, slowed their heart down. Yeah, there were a lot of confounding factors in some of these folks. They were sick with other things and um, were on certain medications that may have perhaps even built up in their system as a result of some of their other sicknesses. and. Um, they came in with dizziness, lightheadedness, passing out, um, and with um, withdrawing those medications, things resolved. Uh, and so that was great, but absolutely, it's something we see all the time in the hospital. There's probably several times per week I'm seeing people with that, with that in the hospital. Um, so what will you do for somebody like that, like one of those patients we just saw this week? I mean, what, what, what was the strategy? Yeah, so it's, you, know, you, you try to correct the other problems, certainly, and remove the offending agents, i.e. the medications. Uh, should the problem not resolve despite those measures, then that may be a time where someone needs a pacemaker. And, uh, uh, you know, a pacemaker, it's an, uh, for, for the viewers, it's an implantable device, as you know, obviously, um, with wires that uh, go to the heart. And essentially these wires, called leads, are just watching what the heart's doing. They are monitoring how fast the heart rate is going. And we can program a heart rate, and whenever it dips below that, the pacemaker kicks in and, and tells it to beat, and it's like an insurance policy. You know, it's, it's there if you need it, uh, right. but often doesn't need to be used, certainly. So I, I think for the most part that probably covers the slow heart rhythm problems. Yeah, I just wanted um, to ask you oh, one sure. more about oh, that. Um, where the, there might be a very elderly patient, say, you know, 85, 86, 90 years old, who comes in not on any of these meds um, and has a really slow heart rate. Maybe they passed out at home because of the slow heart rate. Yeah. Um, and, and 